All right, hello again. Uh, we are going to continue with our last section of Chapter 16, looking at free energy, the G or the delta G, and how it relates to pressure in equilibrium. And now we're going to talk about how it relates to work. Okay, so when we talk about chemical reactions in the real world, we want them to do work as efficiently and economically as possible. So we want to use a chemical reaction to produce as much as we can, cheaply as we can. And so if we have a chemical reaction that is very slow, we can use kinetics to find a catalyst and speed up the rate of the reaction. So that's a pretty easy solution. But if the reaction won't occur spontaneously because of some thermodynamic quality like delta G or enthalpy or entropy, then a catalyst isn't really going to work for that issue. And so we need to either find a different reaction or find a way around that thermodynamic problem. And so we can use free energy to find the amount of work to see if our reaction is going to be viable um, because the change in free energy is equal to the maximum amount of work for that reaction. And so free energy is basically the amount of energy that is free to do useful work. The amount of work obtained from a spontaneous process is always going to be less than the maximum possible amount and we'll talk about that in the next slide. But Every reaction is going to lose some work as heat or to some other form. And so you're never going to get the theoretical or the maximum possible. Okay, so let's talk about real versus maximum work. So any real pathway wastes energy. Like we said, it's lost to heat or, or some other form of energy. So the maximum work for a spontaneous process can only come from the hypothetical pathway. So it's a little bit like when we're finding theoretical yield of a reaction, you know, we do the calculation, which is, unless there's contamination, always going to be greater than the actual yield for that process. If the process is reversible, this means the universe is the same before and after a process, and so you wouldn't see much of a change. But for an irreversible process that really only wants to go one direction, the universe is different after a process, and so these are real processes, and that's due to the fact that some of the energy is wasted or lost. In most reactions, work has changed to heat in the surroundings, and so we're, um, the entropy of the universe is going to increase, because if you remember from before, the entropy of the universe is the sum of the entropy of the surroundings and the entropy of the system. And so since work has changed to heat in the surroundings, this is going to change the entropy of the universe. And as we use this energy in these processes, its usefulness gets degraded, which is why we're currently in an energy crisis. We have all of this fuel or um, you know, oil that is down in the ground and we mine it or draw it up in some way. And it's taken several years, thousands of years, to produce that oil. Um, now when we burn it and use it in our cars and our homes, we're changing it to other forms, so we're not losing any energy, it's just going to different forms, and these are yet less useful forms. And so it takes a really long time to get all that energy back, which is why they say that we're in an energy crisis. Okay, so this finishes up our discussion of Chapter 16. Um, there is no homework associated with this section, um, but we'll still discuss it in class. So have a good day.